Now, do you long for glowing skin and a radiant yes. complexion? Yes. yes, yes. Well, good, because dermatologist Dr. Emma Wedgworth says the secret to achieving it all starts with understanding your skin. So Dr. Emma is here to share three questions we should all be asking about our skin and has agreed to answer some of your own questions in a very special skin clinic. Good morning. You are glowing. Thank you. You know you what you're talking about. You're both looking fantastic as well. We get a lot of help. Oh, yeah. well, a it looks help. amazing. Mm, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so you've been a dermatologist for over 15 years. Uh, why skin? Why is it you went into skin? Well, where, as a dermatologist, you do a lot of training in medicine overall. So you do all your, like, accident and emergency, heart, all of that. But actually, when I went into skin, I realised that skin conditions really impact on people. Yeah. So, like, the quality of life is really, really impacted if you do have a skin yeah. condition. So, actually, by treating people, you can make such a huge difference to their life. And I'm not joking, but people literally say to me in clinic all the time, like, you've changed my life. And I'm like, oh, and that is the best feeling Aww. as a doctor, honestly. It's incredible. It's, it's so confusing, isn't it? Because there are so many products mm -hmm. out there and we're being bombarded. Can I just start on a personal level for a moment? Kids looking at TikTok or other social media and using adult products on their skin causing all kinds of breakouts. Can you please send out a warning? There I mean, to those 12 and 13 year old girls. Look, <laughs> this is what I'm talking to my 12 year old about all the time. And it's so hard because those social media messages are so compelling and they're desperate to get the information from there, to, to do what their peers are doing, all of that. But it's so important to educate our teens, to get them into these really healthy skincare habits and get them using what's right for their skin. Because you're right, you, people can just destroy their skin by using the wrong product. So young skin doesn't need grown up products. Is that, is that the headline? Absolutely. I mean, these older products are made for aging skin and that's just not an issue we've got in 12 year olds they're you know bouncing around with their collagen and their yeah. fat and all that this why they have incredible skin but they may have other needs like breakouts or dryness or other sorts of things but they definitely don't need these anti-aging products damn them and all their collagen <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I think is it you know we, we live in a world we all, all got different skin haven't we now i love social media i find out about lots of different products on social media so i, I love social media for that but they have got different skin to me half of the time. So do you think these influencers need to be, I don't know, a little bit informative about what kind of skin they do have before they try and sell a product? Oh, I think that is such a good point. Everyone has different skin, right? We don't all the, wear the same size clothes or the same size shoes. Of course we're going to need different things. And I think you're absolutely right. You see a product on Instagram, they say it's amazing, but it may not be right for your individual skin type. And that is the one thing that I really try and get across to patients when they come in. Work out what your skin needs. Work out what's going to be right for your skin. And you can do such amazing things with it. And it changes as well, doesn't it? You know, one month I might need this and another month I might need that. So... Absolutely. Like, when the weather changes, I think your skin can change dramatically. So what we do with our skin in the winter is not what we need to do with our skin in the summer. It's like wardrobes. We have a winter wardrobe and a summer wardrobe. And I think of it like that yeah. with skincare. You really do need to adapt. So with all the information out there and everything that's available to us, you're going to simplify everything for yep. us. And you say there are three questions we need to ask ourselves about our skin. So what, what are they? Absolutely. So it's the look, the feel, and the behavior of your skin. So when you're trying to work out what the right thing for your skin is, the first of it, first step is to go and have a really close look. Nice natural lighting, in a mirror, no makeup. Have a look. What do you see? Is there redness? Is there pigmentation? Are there lines? What is it that catches your eye, blemishes about your skin? Then have a feel of your skin. So healthy skin should feel nice and smooth, right? But is it bumpy? Is it rough? Is it flaky? What are you feeling? And then think a bit about how does your skin behave? So are you somebody that reacts to loads of products? Are you somebody that by the end of the day, your makeup's sort of sliding off because you're oily? And then you can work out, what do I want to achieve? Do I want to change pigmentation? Do I want to tackle lines? Do I want to sort my oiliness out? And then you can start to build a really great skincare routine. Good, okay. good start. Yes. Um, we've had lots of questions from viewers. Like um, we're going to go to um, Pip now. She's got a problem with rosacea. So she's um, 42. She thinks she's premenopausal. And over the last year, she said, she, I've had rosacea. And last week, it suddenly took over my face. Here she is. It was itchy, burning, oh. and um, she really felt unwell. It made me lose all confidence. The GP gave me a cream which calmed the acute breakout, but I'm still left with a really red face. The doctor said that I have to try it for two months before looking into anything else. Do you have any advice? 
Okay, so rosacea is common um, and in certain areas, so for example in Ireland, we see about 20% of the population will have some degree of rosacea. And it's a redness and sensitivity based problem that you see and you can get spots and bumps and a lot of it is genetic and we see it more in um, light skin tones as well. So the first thing with rosacea is to make sure that your skincare is super, super gentle. You want a nice cream cleanser, no foaming cleansers, no acids, nothing like that and a really nice rich moisturiser. And that's going to sort out the skin barrier. Then you want your medical creams that the GP's given you, um, and they can be used alongside those. Um, and that should be used sort of every day for two to three months to really see if it's going to kick in. Um, and then you may want to be thinking about your lifestyle. So things like being careful about the sun, not drinking too much alcohol, spicy foods. Um, and I Rosacea is really, really treatable. So, Pip, it will get better, um, but we just need to get going with it and keep the faith. Good 20, luck, Pip. 20 Good luck. percent in Ireland. Yeah, it's really That'll important. be the Catholic guilt. <laughs> That's what Absolutely. that is. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, right, Caroline, uh, I've suffered with hormonal acne for the past five years. I've tried supplements which haven't helped on almost every skincare product. My doctor advised me to try uh, benzalin peroxide, is that right? Benzyl um, peroxide. Uh, but it really dries out my skin. Mm. Nothing seems to present, uh, prevent future breakouts. I'm at a loss on what to do next. So common. I mean, we so many women have breakouts, particularly around the time of their periods, and we're seeing more and more adult acne. This is totally treatable. When you get a bit older, often the skin does get more sensitive, so benzoyl peroxide can be a bit drying. Look at things like azelaic acid, and also creams called topical retinoids, which can be really, really helpful. And start super slowly. We're trying to change the way that your skin works. So it's a bit like exercise. You know, you can't run a marathon immediately. You start really slowly every couple of days, and then you build it up. And again, really treatable. It will get better. Oh, good luck with that, Caroline. Now we've got um, a question from Emily next. I can't get on top of my skin dryness. I have a very dry skin on my fingers. Is there anything I can use? Um, I've used general hand cream, but it's, nothing's helping. I do have eczema prone skin and use uh, um, um, Umavate. Umavate? Yeah. I've never heard of that uh, for this, but it isn't helping oh, my hands. Looks and there's sore, oh, there's hands oh. there. You, Umavate, what's that then? <clears throat> That's a topical steroid cream, an anti-inflammatory cream that you okay. can sometimes buy over the counter. And that can be helpful. The first thing I would also say is hand washing, right? We see so many hand washing problems because the soaps are quite drying and irritable. So think about using a nice cream wash, which actually won't irritate your hands too much. And then sometimes wrapping these things up can also be helpful. Um, but if not, go and see your doctor. There are plenty of stronger things than Umavate. Again, treatable. We, we can, we've got this. When is it a trip to the doctor? When is it a trip to the pharmacy? When is it a trip just to your, your, you know, your local cosmetic centre? Yeah, so you start with the cosmetics. That's not winning. You go to your pharmacist. That's not winning. Go to your doctor. And see it through because we have got so many ways of treating this. And I think that sometimes people put up with so many skin issues when actually we've got loads of ways we can help. Yeah, you've got, and, and as well, when you do get on top of your skin issues, your confidence that you get back, it is, it's like you said, it is unbelievable, isn't it? Oh, yeah. it's life-changing. Sounds yeah. like we just need to simplify it all. And kids watching, listen to your mums and dads as people looking That's after you. Don't be putting on so that adult stuff. <laughs> uh, really important conversation. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Great Thank you. It was great. It was really great. Thank you.